I think it has changed um, the headspace that you approach writing music from. So I was I was into bands like um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, My Chemical Romance. You know, like completely goth and rock music. Hey guys, this is Anurag Abhale, and you're watching me on Radio City Indie from my studio. So we're at my house, which is in, in town. I'm not going to disclose the location, uh, <laughs> but here we are. And you're going to be seeing my studio really soon as well. It's a tough question, very complex. I think it has changed um, the headspace that you approach writing music from because earlier, you know, I think lockdown has changed everyone's perspective on a lot of things. But um, I feel like I've really got the time to think about what direction I wanted to take with uh, my music, you know, consciously thinking. And uh, I think that's been one of the biggest factors uh, thinking about it. So, I mean, I started off playing blues and uh, rock and all of these things. So I was, I was into bands like um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, My Chemical Romance, you know, like completely goth and rock <laughs> music. And um, I think then I moved into like a fusion band, which I was still like more, more of a rock player, but I was playing in like Indian classical fusion band. And, um, you know, from there on, um, I, I, I felt like I needed to make music that kind of resonated more with me. And um, yeah, that's where like, you know, I had these ideas which were kind of moving towards the R&B direction. So I, I felt it right at that point to, you know, start an act of my own and make music that I wanted to make. Um, but then again, like Calico was a collaborative thing and everyone, you know, kind of gave life to this act, which was not, I mean, it took influences from everywhere, which was why it was called Calico. Um, yeah, but then like we grew in a different directions and stuff and now I'm at a point where I still kind of want to make R&B and you know, stuff like that. But uh, let's see how that goes. I think I have a lot of good ideas, you know, I'm working on and uh, I'm excited to say the least. So my last release was, um, I think it was with uh, Nexa Music with the uh, collaboration with Clinton Serejo and uh, A.R. Rahman. I hope I got the names correctly. Um, and um, it was this song which, which basically was like an idea that I was working on. And I just presented like these chords to like my band members. And um, I really liked what the singer Ivan did with the lyrics and everything. And, I don't want to call it a walk ride because <laughs> it sounds really cringy, but um, so yeah, I, I thought it was like a good vibe, and um, yeah, that was that was the last single with Nexa Music and Clinton Sereo. Right, so I was mostly like a guitarist and a, a songwriter, but like never really into production, but. I think as I started growing into more music that I was making and stuff, I, I, I there was like a missing link between songwriting and the production aspect of it. And um, even production, I feel like it has a couple of different stages where it's uh, sometimes more about like mixing and, you know, what elements you should have in the track while there's a songwriter's phase where, you know, you need to create those parts and have those elements and, you know, consciously think about what you want in that mix. So where like a producer's kind of songwriter hybrid comes in 
is um, you know in that phase that kind of moves from like songwriter towards producer in 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 the cycle of a track you know like once you create a, a basic structure you still need like a producer to put it out and stuff and um, I think it's really cool because then you know if you can grow into that songwriter producer place you can then kind of make better songs and you can you know consciously look at like all right I want this element in the mix because it works you know this way and like the just the bass in the song has these parts the you know like a classic Michael Jackson thing but yeah that's what uh, that's where like I was coming from and I think like it makes like a big difference because sometimes as songwriters and producers we don't really know where we're going wrong so being self-aware and improving in those aspects really makes a difference um i i think it's really important um as an artist because everything in the studio at the end of the day it just comes down to one thing it's basically getting your idea from your head uh, and this abstract whatever place it comes from down to you know the instruments and the speakers headphones whatever you listen to it on and that aspect is really dependent on uh, you know what equipment you have how easy it is and how you know how it gives you more creative power to um, be more comfortable with putting those idea sounds um, and uh, sorry ideas down and um, I think what's really cool about uh, these things is because it's so intuitive and it takes like a split second decision to you know be like all right I have this part in my head which I'm gonna forget but I need like something to play it on and if you don't have the right you know workflow and stuff it's it's really easy to like miss out on those parts so it is very important <laughs> really important to uh, have a good studio set up and things like that I feel like kudos to everyone who was trying to make it work five years ago because it was pretty much like 10 times tougher than what it is right now because now everyone is kind of the world is moving forward in terms of their you know mindset and things like that as well and it's become a lot more accessible a lot more easier to put out your things because you have like platforms where you can put it out without really um, going through like a big process and just in general it's been way easier and it's, a, it's the best time to make music right now you know and I feel like the pandemic has every has given everyone this you know like sense of independence in this place where they want to do what they want to do as compared to before like people didn't really have the time and you know the whole rat race of things so yeah the pandemic has really helped open people's minds um, just as musicians as well because like before we didn't really even I didn't have time to think about things and I've also mentioned this that you know I was in two different bands and this is the first time I've taken a break and thought about what music I want to make and uh, the pandemic has been really helpful with uh, the whole mindset of those things Um, so I really like this one singer. I don't know if you've heard of him. His name is Stages Menon. He's, uh, he's really cool. I've been speaking to him often. And I really like the music he makes, especially uh, I've, I've been really digging his last single, um, which was, uh, I feel like it was really cool. And um, another keyboard player would be um, Rohan Raj Daksha, who's also, you know, really good at what he does. So I'd probably have them in the band. And um, I'd also change singers depending on the genre of the song and like what songs I make. And um, yeah, I feel like I definitely have those two. I'm not sure about the rest. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd have these people. At least I'll start off with those people and let's see how it goes.
I have uh, this Fendo uh, American Deluxe, which was it's a it's a it's a bit of an old model. But um, I think after buying this guitar, I just didn't have the need to get any other guitars because it's one of the I think one of my favorite guitars built all time because I've played quite a few as well. Um, then like there's obviously like a cable that connects it to this amplifier which uh, is the Lanny LV200, um, pretty decent amplifier. It's a tube amp, I think it's around 65 watts, um, plays pretty well. And uh, the amplifier goes into these two setups right here. I think one of them is the Focusrite 2i2, which is a sound card, which is basically I can take the cable and just plug this in like right here and um, I can just record directly and you have all these like VSTs and stuff I can show you one of those and um, above this is uh, also like one of my favorite things it's called the iFi Zen DAC which is a uh, which is a really cool DAC I mean it's it, it's got like some chips and stuff inside it which make the music sound good and this goes into my favorite equipment in this place which is the Odyssey LCDX. I think it's really important to have like a good pair of like speakers or headphones or whatever you use to listen to music on because it kind of changes because sometimes people use headphones where you can't even really like get a good sense of what's going on and the best part about these is that it, it kind of makes you feel like you're right there in the recording with the artist and it translates really well into like actually making your own music and producing songs and stuff like that. And then that just goes into like my Mac, which is, um, I, I think it's like a kind of an old version because I don't change my equipment often. Um, and yeah, that goes into my MIDI keyboard, which is the Native Instruments Complete M32. Um, also a really cool MIDI keyboard right here. And the best thing about this is you can actually control like play, pause and you know all of those navigate navigative tools inside of your door. And it's again one of those really small things that kind of saves you like if, if I produce for like 10 hours in a month, which is kind of less, it'll save up like at least two to three hours, you know, just because Half the time is just spent on pressing the record button, which is much easier like right here and you can, it, it makes your workflow really fast as well. My favorite part is this right here. My headphones, which is the Odyssey LCD X. Um, this was a recent purchase, which is why I'm kind of like, you know, awestruck with it, but I don't think that excitement is going to go anytime soon um, yeah and I really love this um, apart from this I think what is also really cool is so I have these as well which are my IEMs that I choose to play on stage with and uh, those are the Meze Rai solos which are which are also like a really cool IEM but this right here if you can see it uh, <laughs> Is this uh, is the pedal board that I use to play music live, and I am proud of myself for all of the pedals on there and the tones that they provide to me while playing music live. So I feel like it has to be the LCD X is my favorite, but there are some others that are also my favorite. <laughs>
Hey guys, so it was a pleasure being on Radio City Indie and stay tuned for more such content.